Hey everybody, how you doing? Well, I guess it's about that time at last. The day has finally come. The big, long-expected DC superhero crossover that we've all been waiting for. But enough about Supergirl and the Flash. Today, we are here to talk about Batman vs. Superman Dawn of Justice. Let me just get this out of the way right now. I didn't really like this one. So, if you are not going to accept anything less than glowing praise for this movie, just stop watching now and start posting your hate-filled comments below, like I know you will. In fact, just in case you need a little inspiration, I thought of a few things you can say in these comments. Feel free to use any of these as a starting point. Um, you can call me a hater, a Superman hater, a Batman hater, a Wonder Woman hater, a DC hater. Most of these are not true at all, but please don't let that stop you. Um, a Zack Snyder hater. Maybe some true to that. Um, a fun hater, a Marvel fanboy, a moron, an idiot, a dumbass, a douchebag, a pussy, an SJW, a homophobic slur. A not actually gay, but again, don't let that stop you. Never let facts get in the way of hate. Um, you can say I don't know what I'm talking about. You can say I wouldn't know a good movie if it jumped up and kicked me in the face. That happened to me once. Um, you can insinuate that Superman 4, The Quest for Peace, is probably more my style. Or you can suggest Batman and Robin is a movie that's probably more my style. Uh, you can say I'm just hating the movie because it's the cool thing to do. I'm just saying what the other critics are saying in a desperate attempt to fit in and or appear relevant. I'm just bashing the movie for the hell of it to troll the fans. I'm reviewing the movie a certain way to appeal to the liberal establishment. Believe it or not, it would not be the first time I've heard that. Or you can suggest I have been bribed and or brainwashed by one or more of the following. Marvel, Disney, Kevin Feige, Bob Iger, Stan Lee, Joss Whedon, Chris Evans, Robert Downey Jr., Hugh Jackman, The Nostalgia Critic, Linkara, President Barack Obama, The Democratic Party, The Republican Party, The Illuminati, The Knights Templar, The New World Order, either conspiracy theory or pro wrestling versions, Tommy Wiseau, General Zod, Lex Luthor, Ernst Stavro Blofeld, The Son of Sam's Dog, that one guy who's in all of Adam Sandler's movies but nobody knows who he is, The Devil, a bowl of fried rice that somehow gained sentience and mind control powers. It could happen. Uh, Michael Bay, the guy who used to steal your lunch money. The guy from whom you used to steal lunch money. The people in charge of DC television shows who are jealous of the attention the movies are getting despite being a far inferior product. And, of course, aliens. Poor spelling and grammar are not only allowed, but they are encouraged. I do want to warn you of one thing. If you post such a comment below, you may run the risk of someone else responding with, You mad, bro? So just keep that in mind. So now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about the damn movie. Batman vs. Superman, aka the Justice League prequel, because that's pretty much the purpose of this movie, setting up the Justice League. Because they're all in here. Even if it's just a cameo, all the Justice League members are in the movie. Which makes me wonder why they didn't just make this the first Justice League movie, because they clearly wanted to. Everything leading up to the big fight between Batman and Superman was pretty weak. Now, granted, most people probably don't care about the plot that much anyway, they just want to see Batman and Superman kicking some ass, which I can understand, but still... Were they even trying? Because this is some really messed up writing. Henry Cavill is back as Superman and is still underacting to hell, although he's a little bit better in this movie. Most of the Man of Steel cast is improved, except for Diane Lane, who did not need improvement. But still, God, he seems like an emotionless robot sometimes. There is one moment where I'm going to try to avoid spoilers as much as possible, but there may be some minor details here and there that will be revealed in this video. But there's a moment where he's surrounded by a group of people, and an explosion goes off, killing everyone around him. Of course, Superman comes out unscathed because he's Superman. But while he's standing there, surrounded by the charred remains of what had to be about a hundred people, this is his reaction. What the fuck? Is showing just a little bit of emotion really too much to ask here? God damn it, Snyder. 
As many of you probably know, I was not a fan of Goyer and Snyder's take on Superman and Man of Steel, and I am damn sure not a fan of their take on Batman in this movie. Their version of Batman is a fucking psychopath who has no qualms about killing people whatsoever. He has a pretty high body count in this movie, and the people he leaves alive, he fucking brands them. He scorches a bat symbol into their flesh. What the hell? And the amazing thing is, I saw an interview that Zack Snyder did before the movie came out, and he seemed to be under the impression that the idea of Batman not killing came from several different sources, among them, the Tim Burton films. Either he hasn't actually seen those movies, or he has a really shitty memory, because Batman did kill in those movies. His body count wasn't anywhere near as high as it was in Batman vs Superman, but still... God, this guy does not get it. In fact, I'm gonna link to that interview below, because you gotta see this thing if you haven't already. He looks so goddamn uncomfortable in that interview. I have never seen anyone so uncomfortable while being interviewed until I saw this video. And it really makes me wonder if either the criticism is starting to get to him or if he's worried about losing his job if this movie underperforms. Which could very well happen. I don't think the movie's going to bomb. It's by the time this video goes up, it's probably already at least broken even, or close to it. But it is possible that it can underperform, because DC and Warner Brothers are expecting Avengers money out of this. And I don't know if it's going to get that high. We'll see, but if it doesn't, ooh, that's going to be interesting. This movie is very dark, not just because of the tone, but also because of the lighting. Which is weird, because there's a moment where Lex Luthor describes the fight between Superman and Batman as day versus night. An odd thing to say, considering there's not a whole lot of day in this movie. It's mostly night, and even the shots that take place during the day look pretty dark because of that washed-out color palette Snyder is so fond of. The story is an absolute mess. It starts out with Bruce Wayne flying to Metropolis during the big fight between Superman and General Zod in Man of Steel. Why he's going there, I don't know. I don't know what he thinks he's going to accomplish. And he's not even going there as Batman. He's going there just as Bruce Wayne. And somehow he's able to commandeer an emergency vehicle. How he did that, I don't know. Well, I guess money can buy a lot of things. He is rich. And there's a moment where a building collapses and starts sending this cloud of dust down the street, conjuring up images of 9-11, naturally. And... Rather than do the intelligent thing, which is what everyone else is doing and running away from it, Bruce runs straight into that cloud. And immediately suffocates on all the dust and dies. No, he doesn't. He actually, by the time the dust settles, he is almost completely clean. Like, the man is made of Teflon or something. Just nothing on him at all. I even heard someone sitting in the row behind me whisper, shouldn't he have a lot more dirt on him? Yes. Yes, he should. But God forbid we get some dust in Ben Affleck's hair. He's got to look spotless. The entire sequence is very silly and really unnecessary. Bruce does not need to witness the destruction of Metropolis firsthand to have a beef with Superman. He can watch it on the news and still have a problem with this guy, like many people in this movie did. There's also this really weird subplot about Lex Luthor selling weapons to foreign terrorists in order to blame Superman for the death of civilians. It's about as nonsensical as it sounds, and it goes nowhere. And it's completely unnecessary because many people were already upset with Superman over what happened in Metropolis. They don't need another reason to not like the guy. I sure didn't. Luthor's plan also involves a jar of piss. I am presenting this information to you completely without context. Because even if I gave you the context, it would still be really fucking weird. Now, some of you may remember back when I reviewed Man of Steel that I talked about my problem with the random-ass flashbacks in the movie, and I certainly wasn't the only one to complain about that. Well, this time, we do not have any random-ass flashbacks. Instead, we have random-ass dream sequences. One of which is kind of a flashback. It actually opens retelling the tale of 
the murder of Bruce's parents because God knows we needed to see that again and we especially needed to see it all in slow motion and we needed to see a shot of the murderer sticking his gun underneath Martha Wayne's pearl necklace. There's probably a metaphor in there somewhere, but I do not want to figure out what Snyder was going for there. And, God, no. And he pulls the trigger, and as he does, the necklace breaks and the pearls fly all over the place and slowly fall to the ground, bouncing here and there, and it is the most self-indulgent tripe, and God damn it, Snyder, stop it. There's also one where Bruce gets a message from someone, no spoilers, um, someone he hasn't met, so I'm not sure how he can get a message from someone he hasn't met before in a dream, or if it actually was a dream, or if the lines between dream and reality were blurring because reasons, I, I don't even know. And then there was the desert dream sequence, which was just really fucking weird. Bruce seriously needs to see a shrink because he's got some issues. Clark has his own little daydream sequence as well, where he has a brief talk with his father, so we get a short little Kevin Costner cameo, and it is amazing. In that one minute that he was on screen, Jonathan Kent was infinitely more likable than he was in the entirety of Man of Steel. Where did this come from? If the character was more like this in Man of Steel, I might have given a shit when he was absorbed by that tornado. And then we have, of course, the big fight at the end between Batman and Superman. And then, of course, Wonder Woman and Doomsday join the fray, and it all turns into one big shitstorm. And I'm not gonna lie, it was good mindless fun. It really was. That is one thing Snyder is good at. He's good at creating big, dumb, fun action sequences, and he's definitely on his game here. The CGI gets a little weird in a few spots, and there are a few moments where the action's moving a little too fast, and combined with the darkness, it's a little hard to make out the action, but there are only a few minor moments where that happened. For the most part, it's pretty well done. And clearly, they listened to the criticism of Man of Steel, where people were complaining about Superman and Zod destroying so many buildings and potentially killing many innocent bystanders, because they went out of their way to fix that with this movie. Almost hilariously so. I, I almost think they may have overcompensated a little bit, but they keep mentioning how they're either in unpopulated areas or the buildings that they are destroying this time are empty. Well, fortunately, it's late, so all the people have gone home already. You sure they have? There's no one working late? There's no janitorial staff cleaning up after hours? No? No, you're sure they're empty? Okay, we'll go with it. Now, when the trailer first came out for this movie, I thought Doomsday looked a little too much like the cave troll from Fellowship of the Ring, and I'm not the only one who thought that, I know, but... I think they went back and touched him up a little bit because he looks much better here. And naturally, there is a moment where Batman and Superman eventually stop fighting each other and they go to fight Doomsday with Wonder Woman. And the thing that makes them stop fighting, I won't say what it is because spoilers, but I will say this, I like the idea on paper, but the execution was clunky as hell. That, that needed some work. As far as the acting goes, most of it is actually pretty good. Certainly an improvement over Man of Steel. There's still a bit of underacting here, but it's not nearly as egregious. And I did find it hilarious. There's one moment in the movie where Superman shouts, WHERE IS SHE?! I told you he was just another Batman. I knew it. I called it. Ben Affleck, all things considered, was actually pretty good as Batman, or at least as good as the script allowed him to be. I did not like this version of the character at all, but Affleck was not the problem there. His performance was fine. I have no complaints about Jeremy Irons as Alfred. He was awesome. As far as Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman, I have mixed feelings. Her performance was okay. The way they handled the character was fine, although I think they would have been better served to give her a solo movie first and then bring her into the mix instead of having this be her introduction. But she just looks way too skinny to be Wonder Woman. I just have a hard time buying it. Like, between now and the Wonder Woman solo movie, she really needs to start lifting some weights. It would help. It really would. And finally, we have Jesse Eisenberg as Lex Luthor. 
no. No, no, no. For the love of God, no. That was fucking terrible. Oh God, I, why? What, why did they think this was a good idea? Just, no. Hell no. He was awful. A at least he looked like he was having fun. I'm glad someone was, but, gah. God, he was bad. And I think that covers everything in my notes, so final verdict. Last hour was good mindless fun. I kind of enjoyed it. I just wish I didn't have to sit through 90 minutes of crap to get there. And overall, I give this movie a solid meh. Uh, I, I think I liked it a bit more than Man of Steel, which isn't saying a whole lot, but... Yeah, it's just... Snyder and Goyer need to go. They really do. I want to see someone else handle Justice League, just not them. Please not them. As far as whether I would recommend this movie, probably not, but do you care? You already made up your mind whether you're going to see it or not. You probably stopped watching and started posting your comments before I even got to this point, so who cares? If you liked Man of Steel, I'm guessing you'll probably like this one as well. If you did not like Man of Steel, you'll probably have issues with this one as well. That's pretty much all there is to it. I'm really hoping the Wonder Woman movie ends up being better because, believe it or not, I don't want to make these videos just to bash these movies. That's not why I do this. I want these movies to be good. I wanted to come here and say, yes, this movie was amazing, but it's not. And it should have been better. And I think they can do better. They just need to get better people to work on them. So here's hoping DC can finally get their shit together in time for the next movie. So until next time... Take care.